Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be talking about how the world between worlds is in no way a form of time travel within the Star Wars universe. And on top of that, the world between worlds is in no way a place where you can actually undo a timeline. And that's one of the biggest rumors going around Star Wars fandom because of the dislike for the sequel trilogy. The hope is that Dave Filoni has secretly created a way with this new space, this world between worlds, to somehow go forward in a new timeline where the sequel trilogy never occurred. So let's dive into what the world between worlds is, Dave Filoni's perception on what this space actually is, and what it means thematically, as well as just going over some brief science regarding time travel, determinism, things of that nature. So let us begin. The world between worlds is not a space where variables and timelines exist, nor is it really possible to use that space in any way to alter your own timeline. And the reason that is, is the second you are in this space, this world between worlds, everything that led you there cannot be undone, no matter what. If it is undone, you cease to actually exist in that place anymore. However, this would also create a paradox. By going into the world between worlds, going through one of those portals, changing the past of your timeline, effectively undoes every single action to bring you there in the first place. Now, if this sounds really bizarre, complicated, and you're not really following, the best way to think of it is this. When Ezra Bridger enters this place, also known as a virgin scatter now that we got information from the sacred Jedi texts, Ezra is actually at the center of all time in the universe, at least in the Star Wars galaxy. In every direction around him, all time is happening at once. That's why we hear sound bites from not only the Clone Wars, other parts of the series, the finale of the series, the movies, you know, the sequel trilogy. We hear Rey, we hear Ben Solo, we hear Kylo Ren, we hear Yoda, we hear Obi-Wan Kenobi. The reason that he hears all this stuff is that in this place it's all happening at once. So what this place truly is, isn't a form of time travel because this place doesn't exist in time. It is outside of time, but it allows the person within it to perceive all time at once. Now, another way to think of this in a very simple way is that time is one straight line and this place is a giant round knot of all of linear time. So Ezra being in the middle of this giant knot allows him the unique perception of seeing a bunch of points in time next to each other in ways that they naturally wouldn't be. Now, to dive into Dave Filoni's perspective on this space, he said the following. So, we sound designed in a line from pretty much every single Star Wars film to be happening all at once in this void. To prime you for the idea that time is always happening here. All of these events are happening. And he goes on to say that he wanted this place to feel dangerous and ominous. A place where choice could be destructive. Where saving Kanan would have actually led to everyone dying. The entire cast would have had an instantaneous death. But as we've all been talking about, this would have been impossible because of the fact that Ezra is in this space in the first place. And the whole thematic reason behind this scene with Ezra entering this dimension has to do with letting go and accepting what has happened. He has the opportunity to save Kane and Jairus seemingly through pulling him through a wormhole, in much the same way that he saved Ahsoka from being sliced in half by Darth Vader. And I'll also explain why her coming through one of these portals is not a paradox at all, but let's finish this idea on theme first. And basically, it's Ahsoka that tells Ezra Bridger to just accept what's happened with his master, to not give in to the temptation to actually pull him through, because to do so would lead to ultimate destruction. It would be a very dangerous choice. Basically, the suggestion is to not interfere with the ways of the Force. Things are as they are, and that's just the way it is. You could also just equate the Force to the arrow of time and how things have unfolded. You just have to accept that that's what has happened. Now, if you're like me and you watch a lot of other movies besides Star Wars and are just generally a fan of science fiction and fantasy, you probably saw Interstellar. And there's a scene in Interstellar at the end when Coop, the main character, is inside something called the Tesseract. And we could basically call this the world between worlds within that movie where he has access to infinite time. Now, at first, Coop actually wants to send a message to his daughter, which he can see through time, to stop him from actually going on this mission. He wants to change the past. But it finally dawns on him that it was actually himself who sent himself on this mission because being in this space he sent back coordinates and data in certain ways to get his past self's attention in order to get him onto this mission which eventually leads him into this weird tesseract space that allows him to access all of time if he didn't go on this mission he wouldn't be there and long story short he wouldn't have saved the world but just like rebels this demonstrates that the past and the future can kind of influence themselves but as we see in the season finale of rebel season 2 as well as in the movie Interstellar
Interstellar, what happened in the past had always happened. We see Ahsoka coming out of that temple on Malachor, holding her arm, at the end of the season 2 finale, but it's not until the final few episodes of season 4 that we know the full context of this story. Future Ezra saves past Ahsoka, and that's just the way it is. That's the way it always has been. Now just to wrap up this video, I want to dive into the idea of this retconning the sequels, and why it just makes no sense. First, the most obvious one is, why would Ezra hear Rey if the idea was to retcon the sequels now and Dave Filoni set this up so he could do so? That would actually create the biggest strange plot hole within the series of Rebels itself. So I don't think anybody is thinking along those lines or thinking in alternate timelines at all. There, there was no substantiation for that idea within the narrative. And with the Ahsoka series coming out, as well as knowing that Luke Skywalker now has Grogu in his possession, there seems to also be this idea that by virtue of Grogu being in Luke's possession, this proves that the world between worlds did somehow alter the timeline because Ben Solo was supposed to be Luke Skywalker's first student in the current narrative. However, as we all know, Star Wars always updates the information. As time goes on, things are added to the existing story. And that's just the nature of storytelling. The Mandalorian adding Grogu into the mix doesn't change anything about the potential past that Luke's history has leading up to The Last Jedi. Love it or hate it, that's still the end result. But it doesn't mean that we can't see this amazing badass Jedi figure that we kind of envisioned, you know, kicking ass in a series doing something, you know? There's no reason to not tell stories that lead up to the fall of Luke Skywalker. And nothing I see currently in canon, nothing with the world between worlds, Ahsoka, Grogu, seems to be contradicting anything that exists. At the very least, we're just getting more context to things that we all want to have context for. And learning more about Luke Skywalker, especially in this time, post Return of the Jedi, is something that I really want to see. So I hope that this video has been informative and now you have a better understanding of the world between worlds and in general how time works and how it is just impossible to change the past without creating a paradox. And I don't think Star Wars is one to want to sort of jump into time travel because it creates a lot of issues. And I don't think anybody working on anything within Lucasfilm has the intention of erasing movies. Remember, if they didn't erase the prequels after all the hate they received, I don't think it makes any sense for anybody to erase the sequels. They have their fan base, the prequels have their fan base, Base, the OT has their fan base, then there are people who like everything, and that's perfectly fine. So, as always, may the force be with you. Adat is signing off.